Once while sitting in ENTOP, a 42 year old male patient came with a 6 months history of swelling on right side of neck. On asking, he also had 2 months, since 2 months he is also having tinnitus on same side along with a recurrent attacks of closing, feeling of opening and closing on the uh, right side, right ear. So, middle aged male patient with a short history of swelling along with an ear complaint on the same side. So, along with so many other uh, diagnoses, one important differential diagnosis that should strike you is carcinoma nasopharynx. Okay, carcinoma nasopharynx. Uh, today's class is on CA nasopharynx. Carcinoma nasopharynx, very important for, for your exam and also in your practice. So, we will deal uh, CA nasopharynx under the headings of epidemiology, etiology, pathogenesis and pathology, clinical features, diagnosis staging, treatment uh, options including recent advances. So, carcinoma nasopharynx was previously known as lymphoepithelioma. This is also a carcinoma mainly of non keratinizing variety but it differs from other head and neck malignancies in uh, some points. That is, first thing, this is located in nasopharynx. So it is a difficult to access area and it has got a high spectrum of variety of uh, clinical features. So a high level of suspicion is needed for early diagnosis. And secondly, this carcinoma nasopharynx has got a very close association with the Epstein-Barr virus. So these two uh, points are different. It's not so common with the other head and neck malignancies. And it has got a male predominance. Okay, male to female uh, ratio is around 3 is to 1. That is 3 times more common in male than in females. And this uh, carcinoma nasopharynx is endemic in certain province of China, mainly a Gangtong province, so otherwise called a Gangtong tumor. Okay, this is more common in this province, so otherwise called a Guangtong's tumor. And coming to the age incidence, this is seen uh, common below 50 years of age. But when you plot it in a graph with the age here and percentage or rate of incidence here, in all other tumors as age advances, the chance also increases. But in nasopharyngeal carcinoma, peak age of uh, occurrence is around 50 years, 50 to 59 years, then the rate of occurrence reduces. So that is uh, with the relation with the incidence, age incidence. Okay, so uh, association with Epstein-Barr virus, difficult to access and high spectrum, high variance of uh, spectrum of clinical features, then more common in male and it is endemic in uh, Guangtong province of southern China, so otherwise called this tumor and the peak occurrence is around 50 years. It's more common below 50 years of age. Okay. Causes of nas uh, carcinoma nasopharynx. We can write it mainly under three headings. One is genetic. Second, it is due to Epstein-Barr virus. And environmental factors environmental factors so genetic EBV and environmental factors in genetically it, is, it has got an association with HLA ok so HLA A B and DR ok and also association with the short term of chromosome number 6 short term chromosome number 6 association and association with Epstein-Barr virus and also what are the environmental factors one is inhalation inhalates this also includes uh, smoking and also passive smoking uh, occupational exposure to uh, formaldehyde exposure formaldehyde actually smoking increases the uh, two to six fold increase in the uh, occurrence of CNSO with smoking and third is 
preserved salted and preserved food that may and also nitrosamine containing food okay so it has also got a very high association with the uh, c and isopharynx so genetic hla a b and d are and uh, short arm associated with a uh, short arm of chromosome number 6 epstein barr virus environmental factors inhalation inhalants then smoking increases the uh, rate to 2 to 6 fold then um, occupational exposure to formaldehyde and also that is salted and preserved food and also nitrosamine containing foods these, these are all uh, known to be an association with the CA nasopharynx regarding the pathogenesis um, the exact pathogenesis of CA nasopharynx is unknown but the theory is postulated one is genetic I already told you that is uh, association with HLA subtypes situated in the short term of chromosome number 6 and also Epstein-Barr virus this EBV is uh, Epstein-Barr virus okay Epstein-Barr virus uh, once in an uh, answer book I uh, got it as everybody's virus it is not everybody's virus it is Epstein-Barr virus okay Pathology, it's always there is a mass in the nasopharynx and WH, under WHO classification, uh, WHO classification of tumors of nasopharynx, it has given under epithelial tumors. What is the WHO classification of tumors of nasopharynx? So, uh, question for postgraduates. Uh, it is under different heading. One is epithelial, then uh, soft tissue, then tumors of bone and cartilage, then malignant lymphomas, miscellaneous like that. So this uh, carcinoma nasopharynx comes under epithelial tumors malignant variety. Okay, so gross features is uh, gross can be of three types. That is the appearance can be of three types. One, it can be a well defined or a lobulated mass with the varying size with a well defined borders. Okay, well defined border or if it is an infiltrated type what will be the appearance if it is infiltrative the borders will be indistinct okay less uh, it's not well defined in distinct uh, borders or it can be entirely submucosal very difficult to diagnose okay so this well defined uh, lobulated mass of varying size with well defined border usually present as cervical lymph nodes. Okay, and infiltrative variety uh, the usual presentation will be with a bone erosion and less of cervical lymph node. Okay, skull base erosion. Okay, so it is infiltrating, infiltrating and going inside and it goes to the skull base. It will, will not come out as a uh, cervical lymph node, rather it will go in causing a skull base erosion. And the submucosal variety will be very difficult to diagnose also. So these are the th three main types of uh, morphology or gross features of a CNA sophalanx. And what about the histology that is uh, microscopy. So earlier this was uh, thought to be a lymphoepithelioma, okay, and later with the uh, improved immunohistochemistry uh, techniques, uh, this was proved to be purely of epithelial origin, okay, epithelial uh, tumor, and because this will stain beautifully with the cytokeratin, cytokeratin positive. And there are also uh, lymphocytes infiltrating. They are mainly T lymphocytes and uh, they are CD8 positive. Okay. T lymphocytes are uh, infiltrating with a CD8 positivity. Okay. And in the histological subtype, the most commonly used one is approved by WHO. That is WHO's histological uh, classification of carcinoma nasopharynx. Divided into type 1, type 2 and type 3. 
for exam purpose, you can use this WHO classification. That is WHO classification, histologic classification. Type 1 is squamous cell uh, carcinoma, keratinizing type. Okay. So, squamous cell keratinizing. Then, type 2 is non keratinizing squamous cell. And type 3 is undifferentiated. And of the squamous cell carcinoma, again there are three subtypes that is well differentiated, moderately differentiated, and poorly differentiated. That you have seen in uh, this uh, histopathology, SPR report, you have seen like this. So, type 1 is squamous cell carcinoma that comes to around uh, 20 to 25 percentage. Uh, 20 to 25 percentage of the total is uh, this variety. Again divided to well differentiated, moderately differentiated and poorly differentiated. And non keratinizing is the rarest one comes to around 10 to 15 percentage. And undifferentiated carcinomas are uh, common. It is comes to around 60 to 65 percentage. So grossly you, the, the uh, lo uh, lobulated mass with the defined well defined borders, infiltrative variety and submucosa and in WHO classification type 1, type 2 and type 3. And again divided like this. So that is the pathology of uh, CA nasopharynx. Next is clinical features. So this nasopharynx is relatively difficult to access area. So uh, I have given the appearance of or the technique of diagnosing nasal endoscopy in a video. Please see that the link is given in the description box so that you will get an idea of how the, the nasopharynx appears. So it is relatively roomy also, so that the in early stages there won't be any symptoms in patients of CA nasopharynx. But later it can present with a, either with a, a neck node, it's a commonest presentation, neck node. Or this can present as uh, gnosis in the anterior part, so nasal symptoms. Or in the lateral wall of nasopharynx, there is eustachian tube. By obstructing the eustachian tube, it will produce so many oral symptoms. Then, uh, this nasopharynx is forming the skull base. So, there are connections from the nasopharynx to the skull base. So, also it produces so many neurological symptoms. By involving the cranial nerves. Or, this can go posteriorly and involve the pterygoid muscle so that it produces trismus or from there it can go to uh, orbit so eye complaint, eye symptoms and due to symptoms due to uh, distant metastasis ok distant metastasis so the symptoms clinical features symptoms and signs you can divide it into under seven headings coming to the neck node which is the commonest presentation of CA nasopharynx and uh, I already told you in the early phases there won't be any symptoms but uh, in 75 percentage of cases at the time of diagnosis there will be neck nodes and these neck nodes are the commonest presentation and the cervical lymph nodes happen in 50 percentage of patients of CA nasopharynx and in 75 percentage of cases of CA nasopharynx, the neck node will be palpable at the time, time of diagnosis. Okay. And unilateral uh, can also have bilateral also, but unilateral neck node is more common than bilateral. And the commonest uh, site is upper part of posterior triangle. Okay. Posterior triangle upper part. So that is regarding neck nodes. And what are the nasal coupling? Present in 30 percentage of cases. So imagine your posterior nose is blocked. So what will be the complaint of the patient? There will be nasal block, isn't it? So can present as nasal block. Then what? It is a lobulated, irregular, friable mass. So there will be 
blood stain nasal discharge or it can go to a frank epistaxis so nasal discharge blood stain or it can be a epistaxis also so these are the nasal complaints occurring in 30% of cases and what about the oral it's in uh, happens in 20% of cases and uh, this CNA so far is common site of origin is from the lateral wall that is fossa of frozen water so immediately uh, near to that comes the eustachian tube so you pressure on the eustachian tube what will happen there will be features of secretory otax media please see uh, the video on secretory otax media also link is given in the uh, description box it's a very important topic so the patient complaint what will be the complaints of the patient can be either uh, deafness conductive hearing loss will be there or what will be there otalgia will be there pain in the ear deep seated pain in the ear that is the commonest uh, complaint or there can be also tinnitus ringing sensation or sound in the ear okay and on examination what will you see i already told you eustachian tube it's a eustachian tubal pathology so can be either a retracted tympanic membrane or it can be a secretory otax media as i have already described secretory otax media in detail i am not repeating it here please see that okay so this is this is not o r a l it is a u r a l oral okay so oral complaint in 20 percentage and what about neurological neurological we can again divided into two one is headache another one is cranial nerve involvement so can be either a headache or it can be a cranial nerve involvement so in 20 percentage of cases there will be presenting as headache okay um i'm erasing this because we need space to write okay okay so 20 percentage of cases the involvement uh, this neurologic involvement will present as headache why headache can be either due to fifth nerve involvement or skull base erosion i already told you this uh, because of the typical position uh, erosion of the skull base is common so skull base erosion will happen or trigeminal nerve involvement in both cases it will present as headache and what about the cranial nerves cranial nerve involvement can be either it can be an isolated or it can be multiple okay so isolated cranial nerve involvement the fifth cranial nerve fifth is the commonest one isolated fifth is the commonest one but sixth involvement can also happen for fifth remember trigeminal nerve involvement is the uh, commonest isolated cranial nerve involvement in case of ca nasopharynx sixth nerve involvement can also happen and in multiple can either present with an horner syndrome or it can present with a multiple 3 4 6 involvement how 3 4 6 involvement either due to uh, erosion of the there are multiple foramina in the skull base so there can be erosion of uh, carcinomatous erosion of this uh, foramina and the nerve involvement or there can be parapharyngeal space involvement and this can cause multiple cranial nerve involvement okay so cranial nerve involvement can be either erosion of the foramina in the skull base or due to parapharyngeal space involvement fifth is the commonest isolated or the sixth then ono syndrome can happen or, or uh, there can also be uh, multiple or uh, 3 4 6 cranial nerve involvement okay next one is trismus how trismus happen due to uh, involvement of which was pterygoid muscle so there can be direct involvement of the pterygoid muscle okay and in i what happens there can be ophthalmoplegia and proptosis either involvement of the uh, cranial nerve or due to direct spread into the orbit ophthalmoplegia and 
proptosis and this distinct metastasis is very rare at the time of presentation and it can be diagnosed by PET scan that we will come across while discussing the diagnostic measures and what are the common site of distal metastasis? It can be um, uh, bone. Bone is a common site. Bone, then lungs, followed by liver. These are the sites of distal metastasis. So these are the clinical presentation. Neck node, commonest presentation. The nasal can be either nasal obstruction or blood stain, nasal discharge or frank uh, epistaxis, or Again, features of retracted tympanic membrane or uh, secretory otitis media. Neurological, either headache or cranial nerve involvement. Cranial nerve involvement, the fifth is the uh, commonest isolated one, then six multiple can be either Horner syndrome or 346 due to and also involvement of cavernous science. Then trismus due to involvement of tergoid muscle, eye, ophthalmoplegia, and proptosis. And distal metastasis, though rare, can happen in bone, lung, followed by liver. Okay. Then, next is how will you come to a diagnosis? What are the diagnostic modalities?